Hello everybody, the Lawn Gnome is here. I had just ordered a drink from that man. So today of course I am here to talk about a brand new movie which is based on a classic movie which is based on another classic movie. That is right, I am here to talk about the Antoine Fuqua directed The Magnificent Seven starring two of his prodigal sons Ethan Hawke and Denzel Washington from Training Day, not to mention another group of fantastic actors and actresses including Haley Bennett, Peter Sarsgaard, Vincent D'Onofrio, and Chris Pratt. So, The Magnificent Seven, if you don't know, is based on a movie from 1960, of course, by the same name, which is a story of a bunch of cowboys that are called to arms to help a village that is in trouble because they are being bullied and overthrown by a terrible person. And this is based on a older film from the 1940s from Japan, of course directed by the legendary Akira Kurosawa, Seven Samurai. This story is so simple and so easy to turn into a movie, it can be remade no matter how many times you want. There is an anime from 2005 called Samurai 7, which is one of my all-time favorite animes. Apparently, I even heard from other fellow YouTube film reviewers that the Disney Pixar movie, A Bug's Life, is also based on the same story. I was not expecting this movie to be anything earth-shattering. I was just expecting to go in and see a fun, amazing Western film. And you know what? I got that and so much more. I think that the best incarnation of this legendary story is the 2005 anime, but this brand new version of The Magnificent Seven definitely comes in at a close second. It captures the classic style of Western beautifully, especially when you see classic movies featuring John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, as well as the original Magnificent Seven, the grandeur of the landscapes, the amazing drama between the protagonists and antagonists during the battles and shootouts. It was just such an amazing and entertaining spectacle. You just really feel that you are taken back in time to a simpler time when the West was wild and there were everyone from outlaws to rebels to bounty hunters. Unlike a lot of the other films and stories that were based on this, there was a very diverse cast. You had a black man, you had a Mexican member of the Magnificent Seven, you had an American Indian. You also had a man from the Far East in Byun-Yun Lee as Billy, and I thought that he was one of the highlights of this film because not only did he use the gun, he also used knives, and you definitely saw a little bit of his heritage in the style of those knives. The action sequences are fantastic, you've got very dramatic moments, you've got very subtle moments. You also have a very strong female character who I really appreciated in this movie. There was just enough of each of these people in the movie so you definitely got your fill. I loved Chris Pratt. I thought that he was fantastic as Faraday. He was definitely the comic relief that you got in all of the other incarnations of this story, and it was just so much fun to see him on screen because he had such great lines, and he was a pretty kick-ass hero, too. But there are a couple of things that make this film good, but not perfect. I think that one of the weaknesses of the film was probably the villain in Bartholomew Bogue. I remember a lot of the other stories, and especially the 1960s Magnificent Seven, Eli Wallach was, without a doubt, one of the best badass villains that I ever saw in that story. Sarsgaard, on the other hand, not so much. I feel that he came off very, very strong and threatening in the beginning, but in the end, he just really felt like a real pushover to me. But that's just me. I could be completely wrong. I also feel that even though this is definitely a movie that captures the classic story, captures the classic style of the Western, the one thing where I believe this could be the downfall is the fact that there is a major lull in between the Magnificent Seven coming to the village 
towards the final battle. And that's just because of the fact that it's supposed to be the calm before the storm. If you watch the other versions of the story, it's the exact same style, the exact same events, but it definitely is something that people will find boring. I think that people actually walked out of the theater, maybe even before that part of the film, just because they weren't really digging this film. But I sure as hell dug it. I thought that it was a fun, entertaining film, and I am embracing this remake, especially considering the fact that we had another remake that came out earlier this year, which was far from fantastic. This definitely was one of the stronger films of the fall season. Is this a movie that I want to see again? Most definitely. I mean, I don't want to knock the older films, but I think I liked this one so much more than the original Magnificent Seven and even Seven Samurai. And do I want to get this one on DVD? At this point in time, I'm going to say that I do, but do I want to get it at the full price? Not so much. If I could get it for like $10 on a discount rack, that would probably be the way that it gets added to my collection. Because I feel that having a copy of the Samurai Seven series and owning a copy of the Magnificent Seven it would make me feel happy knowing that I have the samurai story and the cowboy story in some shape or form in my collection. So right now I am aiming to adding it to my collection, but I would definitely recommend to see Magnificent Seven if you respect the Western, if you want to have a good time and be entertained in the theaters. And also at the very end is the credits roll. There is an unbelievable thing in there that you are just going to be so happy about, especially if you have seen the old Magnificent Seven film. And I am going to give the Magnificent Seven three out of four. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Please put your comments in the box below, and let's have a conversation on the Magnificent Seven. And I will see you in the next one. Actions speak louder than words.